Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shirazi and I'm a board certified dermatologist and I always get asked how rosacea is diagnosed, why rosacea happens, what it looks like, which laser works best for rosacea. So I thought I would dedicate an entire YouTube video to talking about rosacea. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a new video. So let's start with what rosacea looks like. In general, rosacea without bumps looks like just a sheet of red inflamed skin, particularly on the nose, the cheeks, the chin, and then this area, which is the glabellar area. Now, along with rosacea, you can get breakouts like pimples, uh, mostly on the nose and the cheeks, and you can get flushing and blushing Generally, rosacea happens in people between the ages of 30 and 50, and typically in fair-skinned people. Those with rosacea are also very particular about what touches their skin. A lot of things sting and burn their face, so they're very particular about products. And that's because, in general, they have very sensitive, very inflamed skin. So let's talk about why rosacea happens. Well, mostly genetics, you can thank your parents for it, but don't blame them for everything because environmental factors also play a big role. Some of them include sun, alcohol, spicy foods. I know all the life's pleasures we tend to trigger rosacea. Anything that makes you flush and blush heat, being on the screens for too long, the blue rays can definitely trigger rosacea flare-ups in people that are genetically predisposed to developing it. Your skin immunity and your immune system also plays a role. There's a thought that people with rosacea are sensitive to a particular type of bacteria called Bacillus oloraneus. And not everybody that has a sensitivity to this bacteria gets rosacea, but there is some correlation to that. And some scientists have found a link between H. pylori in the gut and those with rosacea. It's not you know, always the case, but there is some connection with H. pylori. And then I don't want you to get grossed out about this next fact, but all of us have mites that live on our skin and on our pores. Yes, you may have been able to get through life without me telling you this, but a mite called Demodex lives in our pores and sometimes people with rosacea tend to have an overabundant of this mite that can flare up rosacea, contribute to rosacea disease. So many of the treatments are targeted at reducing these um, organisms or keeping them more balanced in the skin. Another key player, a protein that generally keeps the skin protected from infections called cathelocytin may cause redness and swelling seen in those with rosacea. So there's some link to that protein. So let's talk about the question everybody wants to know, how can we get rosacea to go away? Well, unfortunately, there's no cure per se for rosacea. We can certainly minimize it, we can control it. We can't change your genetics. So those that have rosacea will always have some predisposition to flare-ups, but we can certainly keep it under control. Now, if you have rosacea, without bumps, that means without any pimples or breakouts, you have what's called erythrotelangiectatic rosacea, which means you mostly have broken capillaries and redness and flushing and some swelling, but not the typical breakouts we typically see. In those cases, vascular lasers work the best. These lasers, such as the V-beam laser, which targets hemoglobin in the broken capillaries and selectively destroys it and removes it from the skin, will help with reducing redness, helps with flushing and blushing, the symptoms of rosacea, and overall reduction of inflammation seen in this type of rosacea. Other lasers such as the IPL and the BBL are also very effective, as well as the XLV laser. In general, you need about three to five sessions of these treatments every four weeks to really see a reduction in the redness and the symptoms. Now it's really important to treat rosacea and to keep it at bay because long-term rosacea in the skin can cause the skin tissue to thicken, particularly on the nose, the chin, the glabella area. Think of W.C. Fields or Bill Clinton. 
you see the thickening effect over time and that is called rhinophyma and when that happens you really need to do a separate procedure to really carve down and smooth down that thickened sebaceous skin. So what specific ingredients and treatments can you do to maintain the rosacea and slow it down from progressing? Well, one is sulfur. Sulfur is great for redness, reducing inflammation. It also has antibacterial effects, the key players for rosacea treatment. I also like to use azelaic acid, particularly azelaic 10 serum. That is antimicrobial, also helps reduce inflammation and redness. Very effective for treating rosacea as well as maintaining it so it doesn't progress. And then there are prescriptions um, such as ivermectin, also known as cilantro, metrogel, which is known as flagyl, that helps with rosacea. Now when somebody comes in and they have a big flare-up, they have so much swelling, they have a lot of breakouts and just a lot of redness, then sometimes it's best to do a course of an oral antibiotic that is very specific for the skin, such as doxycycline. Not only is it antimicrobial, but it also helps reduce the inflammation. Now those with rosacea can also develop ocular rosacea, which is when they get itching, redness, and inflammation of the eyelid. In fact, ocular rosacea is a sign that you may develop skin rosacea down the line. They may also get recurrent eye infections like pink eye or chalazion. Ocular rosacea is best treated with doxycycline, so if you do develop this, then oral medications may be necessary. So what are some natural remedies for rosacea? One of my personal favorites is licorice root. Licorice root is a flavonoid. It's an antioxidant that also helps reduce inflammation. It's great in skincare products for rosacea. I've recommended some down below, but this is one of my favorite treatments. So if you find that you have symptoms of rosacea or you have a propensity or a genetic predisposition, be sure to talk to your dermatologist or start on one of these key ingredients that help reduce the progression of the disease. So I hope that was helpful and gave you some key information to know about rosacea. If you have any questions or comments, ask them below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Thanks for tuning in, guys.